Hi guys, and welcome to another Raspberry Productions video. Within this video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the brake pads on the Triumph Daytona 675 front brakes, which are the Nissan calipers. The bike that I'll be working on is a 2006 model, however, I believe the braking system run across most of the models. First off, you will need an 8mm Allen key. This can be a socket like this, or an actual Allen key, up to you. What we're going to do is start undoing the caliper bolts themselves. There's two of these, but don't withdraw them fully for now. Once you have the bolts to their finger tight, you will need some nose pliers. This is to remove the pin at the back of the pad retaining bolt, which looks like that. Then remove the pad retaining bolt itself with a 6mm Allen key. Remove the bolt fully, leaving the pads and the retaining spring loose. Then remove the retaining spring which holds the pads in their place. And now you can remove the caliper fully. Word of warning, the pads are loose now so when you remove the caliper the pads will actually fall out. When the original pads are removed, make sure you don't throw them away. You need these for two reasons. One, they may have the anti squill plates on, as you've just seen on these. And two, so that you can compare that they're the same as the new pad. Next, it's completely optional, but I like to completely clean the caliper inside and out to make sure there's no blockages or build-ups. I even go as far as getting an old toothbrush so you can get right inside the caliper and around all of the pistons. Now look at that, absolutely gleaming, as good as new. Here are my favourite pads, they're the SBS racing pad, but of course it's personal choice. Here are the anti school pads I mentioned earlier. Then clean them and apply a small sliver of copper slip over them before putting them onto the new pad. Now if you just compare the new with the old pads, make sure they're the same, same shape metal on the back and also the same size hole in the middle. Which these seem to be perfect, so we're good to go. Now put the anti squill slash vibration pad onto the new pads, ready for installation. pads together and insert into the caliper. Make sure all the holes line up ready for the retaining pin to be inserted. Clean the pin and the spring ready for installation.
Insert the pin into the first pad, but not fully through, as we need to make sure there's still room for the spring to fit behind. Insert the spring so that the dip in the middle faces inwards. And push the pin all the way through lining up the holes. Use a 6mm allen key to tighten the retaining bolt as much as possible without over tightening. Reinsert the locking pin removed from earlier. Now use something clean and flat to push between the pads so they're pushed back into the pistons on each side. This will allow for insulation and the disc to slide nicely between them. And now your caliper is ready for reinstallation. Slide the caliper over the disc, lining up the caliper bolts with the forks. Take your 8mm allen key from earlier and tighten the bolts to finger tight. It's always best to do things up with your fingers until they get to finger tight so you don't strip the threads by using a wrench or ratchet. Once you're happy that they're suitably tight, get your ratchet and just finished it off with a couple of quarter turns. Notice I'm holding the ratchet close to the head as if I held it further apart there could be too much pressure for the aluminium casting. And that brings us to the end of the installation. I hope you found the video helpful. Please give me a thumbs up if it's helped you out and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thanks guys.